Chairman, bilingual education is a cornerstone of our education policy. In the early 1990s, the government moved to allow Indian students to sit for five non-Tamil Indian languages, or NTILs, at major examinations such as the O-levels. Separately and in recognition of the status of Tamil as an official Indian mother tongue, MOE ensures that funding for the official mother tongues, namely Malay, Mandarin and Tamil, is higher than that of the five NTILs. Apart from Hindi, the number of students taking the four other non-Tamil mother tongue languages is far smaller. In the main, MOE supports students taking these subjects, namely Bengali, Urdu, Gujarati and Punjabi, by way of grants and making available schools over the weekend so that students sitting for national examinations in these subjects can receive an education in their mother tongue languages in a conducive environment with teachers provided by the ethnic community groups. All in all, MOE's broad approach towards the various NTILs is inclusive while acknowledging the position of Tamil as the official Indian mother tongue language. So I would like to know when was the last time MOE raised grants for Singaporean students taking the NTILs? I also inquire if the Ministry independently assesses the salaries of NTIL teachers and whether they are remunerated reasonably in view of the important role they play in the Ministry's bilingual language policy. So many local schools host parallel programs where students are taught their NTIL subjects during curriculum hours when their classmates are sitting for lessons in the official mother tongue languages. However, the parallel program landscape varies considerably for the NTILs. For example, by virtue of the large number of students taking Hindi, there are in excess of 150 parallel programs for Hindi in MOE schools, while a smaller NTIL, for example Punjabi, has one school offering a parallel program. The parallel program saves many students a trip to a centralized school over the weekend to learn their NTIL mother tongue, leaving these children with more time to engage in other academic and non-academic pursuits. I have two other questions in this regard. Can I confirm what is MOE's policy towards new requests for parallel programs by ethnic groups in charge of NTILs with a small enrollment so that more of our students can be served by them? Secondly, and on current policy, I have been made to understand that if a Singaporean student taking an NTIL is enrolled in a school-based parallel program, he or she will not be allowed to participate in the weekend NTIL class as MOE currently disburses the grant for both separately. One result of this policy is that community groups with smaller NTIL enrollment see it far more economical and logistically convenient to hold weekend classes even if parallel programs may be the preference of some parents. I asked the government to undertake a review of the NTIL space with a view to consider the new challenges of community groups, students and parents. In theory, a one-size-fits-all grant is fair, but the unique challenge of each NTIL, particularly the small, one, the small ones, should prompt a second look at the grant framework so that the desired outcomes of the Ministry's bilingual policy are achieved. Thank you. Thank you.